Hi guys, it's Ian from Qtips and today I wanted to start a series of tutorials to demonstrate some QGIS tools. Uh, in these tutorials we're going to uh, create a, a layout. We'll identify a piece of land for development and then create the layout for that piece of land. Uh, just on a side note, it's important to note that this is a fictitious project. This piece of land is not really being developed, so if you do recognize it, just don't worry, it's not being developed. Um, so the tools we're going to look at, first of all, we're going to look at uh, bringing data in from Google Earth. We are going to then create some hard copy maps which we will uh, draft, be doing some drafting on with a normal pencil and ruler. Once those drafts are done, we will scan those and bring them back into QGIS. We will then georeference those images and use the georeferenced images to capture the actual layout. We'll capture that, that layout data using some CAD tools, some useful CAD tools. Finally, we'll convert that, those CAD lines into polygons. And once they are polygons, we'll be able to assign attribute data to, to the various um, features. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's what we'll do. Finally, I think what we'll do is we'll take it back into Google Earth and, uh, and see how the layout looks. So it's an interesting tutorial, and I hope you guys find it useful. Let's get started. Right, so here we go. We're going to start in Google Earth. So let's open that application now. Okay, there we go. So this site, I've already had a look around, and I found a site which is uh, yeah, is, is fairly uh, relevant or, or useful in, in showing you this example. Um, it's down here somewhere. Okay, this is Ornrist in the Western Cape. This is Hermanus over here. You can see this mountain range running behind. And it is this site here. Okay, so there's a little river and flay on the bottom of the site. And then around the site, there's a, a lot of dental development that's happened and suburbs that have been growing up, but still empty. So a lot of potential to develop this site and sell off the properties for a big profit. So what are we going to do? So first thing we need to do is create some place marks because um, what we want to do is we want to be able to, to, to identify the site in QGIS and then overlay the cadastral information and then select the cadastral or the site for this one, for, the, for, for this particular site and then we can export that and, and create our little uh, hard copy map. So I want to yeah, create a layer that we can import into QGIS so I'm going to start using place marks. Okay, and these place marks, my mouse is misbehaving. These place marks we'll also use later as control points. So I'm going to call this one A. I just want to change the style slightly and make it a little smaller. Not fine, that's fine. Maybe make it yellow. Yellow is always a good color to see. And then what we can also do is we can we don't really need to see that, that letter. So if we just go into the style type, we can make the scale of the, the label zero and that should make it disappear. Okay, so there's one. We're going to add four more. It's always good to add your uh, control points um, as what far apart as possible um, so that the transformation when you do the, the georeferencing is uh, most accurate. So we're going to add a couple more. So this one we're going to call B. And B is going to be up here on the road. And another one. C can be down here in the bushes. C, okay. And the last one. We'll call this one D. And that can be just down here on the edge of the flay. I think that should be that should be sufficient. I'll say okay. Okay, so at the moment in the table of contents, you'll see the new place marks are all added here. And they're all separate layers, um, which we are not too happy with. We want to be able to import them as one layer. So what you do is you, in your table of contents, I always refer to this as the table of contents in these uh, GIS and um, Google imagery or Google mapping applications. And in this, I refer to as the, the map view. So we've got table of contents and map view. So in the table of contents, we're going to say, click on the temporary folder and just say folder creates a new folder. We're going to call this control points. We say OK. That adds a new folder to our table of contents. And then just drag the place marks down and dump them into the new folder. Doesn't matter the order. 
Okay, we've got that. And then one other thing I wanted to do while we were still here is just capture the existing structures and buildings. So those are going to be polygons. So we're going to add polygon. And we're just going to capture this one here. I'm going to include the swimming pool. Okay. I'm just going back to this corner. I think the building does something like that. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Um, we're going to try and stay away from it as best we can. Okay, that's one. We're going to call this building A. Building A. Okay. And then this one too. So this is also on the site. So another polygon. Building B. Okay, and then just capture, give a rough, roughly capture the edge of this building. So we can make sure that we don't stick a, an earth line or a layout boundary smack bang through the building. Um, the surveyors wouldn't be too happy with that. Uh, and then, much like we did, because these are now polygons and those are points. Um, and I think you, as a KML, you could probably import them both. But let's just separate them. I'm just going to stick it on as a different folder and just call it structures. Structures. Okay, as far as I know, you, I think you can have lines and polygons and points all in one folder and export them and import those all as one KML. But uh, just to, to keep it neat and organized, I'm going to have them as two separate layers. So, first thing we do, export the control points layer. We're going to save as and I've created a whole bunch of little folders here and I've got one called KML control points and I'm going to call it and it needs to be a KML okay it was KMZ as a default KML and then that exports quite quickly I'm going to do the same for structures save place as same place structures KML there we go we're good okay so now that is it we're pretty much done with Google Earth I'm going to close this down and open up QGIS. Let's do that next. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so let's just double click on our QGIS desktop to open that up. Okay, there we go. QGIS is opened up. Now, in this tutorial, I'm using QGIS 2.18 Las Palamas and it's version 14. Um, I know 3 has been released, and but this is the, the latest long-term release version which I like to stick to because it's it gets the most support and oh yeah at the moment that's that's the, the latest long-term release uh, version of QGIS uh, and as I'm doing this tutorial it's early 2018 so yeah, depending on when you guys are looking at this you might have a different version available you might already be on to on to QGIS 3 so let's do that now so we're gonna add the KMLs which we opened up so we, we can overlap it with our existing data. So we want to go to the KML folder and you'll see nothing's shown because our file type selected is shapefiles. We just need to make sure that that says keyhole markup language. You can add two layers at once. We we'll select them both and we'll say OK and open. There we go. So our control points and our buildings. And we can change these colors later, but for now, let's just see if it overlaps with data that we already have. So now we're going to add some other data. So we're going to go to the cadaster folder. Now we need to change this back to shapefile. Shapefile, there we go, CADS. Open, open, yes. Okay, so there we go. We've got a cadastral for this area. So if I just select the site, Remember, this one was in the road, and this one was across the road uh, in the other urban area. So let's just zoom to layer. This one was in the flay. Where is that other one? Oh, okay, it's, it's obviously underneath, and that was in trees. Okay, so there's our property. Now we just need this as a site boundary, so we're going to export it. But before we do that, we need to change our project coordinate reference system from the default, which is a geographic coordinate reference system, WGS84. We need to change that to one we're going to be using, which is in meters, not decimal degrees. Because we're using a scale ruler, or a ruler. This one's not a scale ruler. And we need to be working in meters. So let's change that now. So you can change that by selecting this little button down here. And just go and select the right one for your area. So mine is a user-defined coordinate reference system. 
and it is this one here. Now, if you look at the the uh, project four annotation or, or or characteristics of this coordinate reference system, it's transverse Mercator. The longitudinal line or the meridian that it's using is 19. The scaling factor is 1, so there's no scaling. And then we've got a datum set, which is uh, WGS84, and the ellipsoid is also WGS84. Okay, so that is the one I'm using. So I'm going to apply that and say OK. And you might have noticed it kind of got squished, changed slightly, because the, the data we're bringing in has been transformed to the new coordinate reference system. So we just want to export this site only. So in your table of contents, select the layer, right click, and you can say save as. Now we're going to give it a name. What are we going to call it? Let's go in here. Uh, let's just call it site. Okay, and we just need to make sure that we choose the new coordinate reference system that we're using. That is the existing um, layer coordinate reference system for CADs. And we want it to also be the same as the project. Here we go. And then the last thing, just make sure you select save only selected features. Otherwise, you're going to export all the other cadaster. And we only want this little land parcel. And that is it. Okay, done. So now we have got our new site boundary. And if we just have a look at the coordinate reference system, it is correct. All right. So we're getting somewhere. Um, this little tutorial has already gone on for 10 minutes. So I'm just going to end this little section. I'm going to call it part one. And for part two, we're going to, to add some new layers and then create a layout which we will then print and use the hard copy to, to actually sketch up the, the layout using a little ruler at a set or predetermined scale. We'll figure that out now. Okay, so here we go. On to the next one. Please join me for that. Cheers.